Welcome to our latest edition of todebate.net, our podcast of debates. Today we have a really interesting motion that is let's ban social media from the workplace. And surprisingly to me, uh, that's what Sebastian uh, will argue for. Uh, well, not that surprising. We flipped the coin. Sebastian, how are you doing? Are you prepared for the debate? I am prepared for this debate. I think it's going to be an interesting one. My tendency, I'm not going to say what would be my personal take on that. Indeed, I have been assigned randomly to defend the motion, that is to ban social media at work. Also, by the flip of a coin, we decided you go first, and I go second. So you, I know you love going first. So um, why don't we just get started? Let's get started. Okay, let's do this. Sebastian goes first and argues for the motion. Imagine the following situation. You're at work, you're doing your emails, and then you get a notification from social media, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. So you check it, and then you go back to work, and then you're curious to see if there's someone else who's going to like your post, or if there's a comment in response to what you had posted. So then you check your phone, or you open a new uh, web page, and then you go back to work. And then again, you think about it, you're constantly interrupted. We don't need studies to, show, to know this, that we're distracted, and we know we do that. Uh, I'd be very surprised if uh, listeners here, and I know it for myself, that we are constantly Uh, distracted, interrupted. And there's a cost of that because by the time my brain switches back to what we were doing, there's a, a time lapse and we just it's just wasted time. And I'm not saying it's necessarily unproductive and I'll get back to this because it could be useful for us, for our brains to have some distraction, have some breaks. But what I'm talking about here is interruption, constant interruption. And I've actually measured this for myself uh, in the past where I've held a spreadsheet and I try to measure during the day how often I was interrupted. And here's the thing, we're already distracted by so many things, coffee breaks, cigarette breaks, personal calls, news. Right? I've measured this for myself, and I, and I know I'm always distracted. The problem with social media is that it's many hours, as opposed to a coffee break, which is maybe 10 minutes. Social media, if you add the number of hours that we spend on this during the workday, is probably way more. Uh, now, again, it depends for everyone, and that's, that's the problem in this case. Uh, and it's still possible to use your personal phone, by the way, right? If you say it's banned on your corporate machine, it doesn't mean you can't use it on your phone anyway. So you can't ban this. It just would not look very professional to use your phone on the side of your desk like this when you're supposed to be on your on your laptop or in a meeting. Back to this in my second part, there's a security risk, viruses, but also a leak of product information, for instance, because you accidentally post something you were not supposed to post on social media. This happens regularly that people misuse social media because they're at work and they confuse the boundaries. So overall, it's beneficial to have this limit of banning social media on the workplace. Now, it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his argument against the motion. You said it yourself. It's not that we invented distractions with social media. Uh, so I'm not I'm not smoking. Am I allowed to uh, to take a social media break every 15 minutes or so for a few minutes? I disagree with you with the idea that social media use adds up to more time than let's say smoking. Because in most in most countries these days, you actually have to walk out of the building to take a smoke. And while, guess what? While you're walking out of the building to take a smoke, you're not working that time. You're not working for the walk, you're not working for the cigarette, you're not working for the walk back. Maybe you take a bathroom break on the way back, so it's 20 minutes. Um, checking my social media status, maybe two, three minutes, if I'm really dragging it out, four, five minutes, but not the same time. And so that's my my uh, my first point. Uh, we, we didn't invent distraction with social media. People got distracted all the time, and just by banning social media, you're not removing that. Secondly... What's next? Are we banning speaking at workplace too because it distracts us from the screens or from our current work? Social media is a means of communication these days. That's a common uh, tool. Everyone is using it. And banning it means banning an, an important social aspect of our lives that we are so used to that we use it all the way through. And it's simply plain artificial. And This is what exactly will happen, and you, you gave that as an example. If you ban it from the workplace, then people will use their private phones. And I think it's more distractive if people check out of their work 
to check their social media account on their private phone instead of having it integrated in the first place. And the third argument I'm going to go deeper later on is um, you you give away a lot of positive effects of social medias like lead generation, research, additional information, collaboration. There are plenty of aspects of that that you give away by banning it that are outweighing the cost. <laughs> Now it's Sebastian's turn. Let's hear his rebuttal. While I'm not a smoker, I do sometimes walk around. And I would counter-argue that walking is considered not working. I think resting your mind is actually also a way to continue thinking unconsciously about something. Whereas when you're interrupted by social media, your mind space is taken up by something else. And there is exhaustion by being constantly interrupted. Whereas you walk around, go to the bathroom, whatever... There's, I think, a, a relaxing of the brain in that aspect. Again, I'm not an expert. It's just fairly intuitive to me. I may be wrong on that. You have a fair point. Uh, we're not going to ban talking. There's, there's, there are positive aspects to social media. And that's why what I'm proposing is not a complete ban of social media and also def defining what is social media. There can be a whole spectrum of it from Facebook to Twitter to Instagram to YouTube. For instance, let's take YouTube. I frequently check YouTube for tutorials on things. It would be stupid right, to ban YouTube because um, as part of your work or maybe because you want to be inspired, there could be interesting tutorials. So it would be very difficult to restrict specifically those videos. Maybe Facebook is a little bit less useful. I don't know. I'm questioning. So depending on your field of work, maybe having that thought for a ban on which social media to risk could be uh, beneficial. I also mentioned the security risk. So it's also protecting the employee from not getting fired. There's multiple examples, which I had looked up, where people got uh, their contract terminated because they leaked uh, product information on social media, even if it was only with their friends. Just because they're in the workplace, they have a natural tendency to do it without realizing the potential damage to the company. Or even talking about the company's business when they should not be doing so. They're not entitled. They're not PR uh, to be able to talk about the company. So it is true. It's imposing a, a restriction on a freedom, but a company is not a democracy. You can impose the rules that you want within that private sphere of the workplace, of course, as long as it doesn't infringe uh, fundamental rights uh, of the country. But it's not a democracy. You can really restrict uh, uh, people from doing things. And in fact, it's probably useful in most cases. We know we, have a, we struggle ourselves individually to restrict ourselves from tendencies from procrastinating, from being distracted. It's just a natural thing. So sometimes having a structure, even if it comes in the form of a ban, can be useful uh, to be more productive, to be more efficient. And yes, you said, and I had said this myself, you can use your phone still. I'm not forbidding this, or it's impossible to ban it. Um, and we've often in our debates talked about the fact that some things in theory are useful, but in practice are not applicable. And I'm going to say the same thing here. Indeed, the phone cannot be restricted. However, you do look unprofessional. If you have your phone out in a meeting and you're supposed to interact with other colleagues, it will be obvious. On your laptop, it's a little bit more complicated. It's more ambiguous what you're doing on your laptop. So then there is a peer pressure, right? There's peer pressure of you being on your phone and not being able to be completely immersed into what's happening in the workplace. So in conclusion, I'm saying, well, there's a spectrum of ban that you can use. Uh, it's also in the, in the interest of the employee to be protected for his own good and it's not a democracy, a company. So we can impose this ban to make sure that this is the most efficient uh, way of you know, getting people to be productive. Next up, Dirk. Let's hear it. Yeah, so you make it sound like I called for democratic decisions in companies. I didn't. Uh, I know that we can. Um, and I... Even even to, to more extreme, there's nothing that blocks you from uh, basically rendering private phones useless. So as a company, it's fairly easy to block private phones from the corporate network. You know what? I know plenty of buildings where I walk in and there is no reception on my phone right there. So uh, I can probably look at the Twitter archive of the last two weeks, but nothing that happens while I'm in the building. So, uh, of course, you can restrict. Of course, every company should have the right to put out their own, own rules. As you said, it's not a democratic. What I'm saying is it's artificial. 
because you ask people to change their patterns of communication. And what I'm also saying is it's not worth uh, doing it because you, you have costs associated with it. Uh, people are used to collaborate through social media. They ping each other. They ask each other's opinion. They synchronize on work. I don't even know anymore how to organize spontaneous meetups without using numerous channels, really. And the same is true for, for the, 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 the current modern living person that is used to technology. You block yourself from that uh, people do uh, uh, use channels for research for information for lead generation also and that's the other effect um, you talked about the risks people leaking information fair enough but what you didn't mention is that there's also an advantage of people being good advocates to your company so if they're not leaking but instead telling everyone in the world how awesome their employer is or what cool product they work on what you effectively get is a, a free of charge advertisement and and this is something that comes as a benefit of social media and so my my point actually is first it's unrealistic to really ban it because you ask people to, to behave artificially compared to how they behave normally. Second, you lose a lot of positive effects of social media without really reaping what you claim that you reap. You're not getting more productive. People have been procrastinating and uh, and, and fleeing work for for decades it's not an invention of social media and it will, won't change due to social media there's no there's no study that shows that people are less productive because of social media quite to the contrary actually the last years we had we had an increasing and ever increasing level of productivity so we measure company successes in output in productivity not in how much time they use on what i think social media is better than we think it is <laughs> Final statements. Sebastian goes first. I stayed away from studies because I, I this is what I was making as an initial point where in which we are constantly interrupted. So I, I cast a bit of a doubt on those studies because I know my own habits and I see it around me and I'm very doubtful I'm more productive by, by being constantly interrupted. Um, so that's why I insist on the spectrum of the ban and being more specific. Instagram, Snapchat, useful for collaboration? Uh, I'm a bit doubtful. I'm a bit doubtful. Useful for PR? Maybe. Uh, but then there's a risk. Right? How do you control those who do good PR versus who, those who do damaging PR without realizing that they're doing damaging PR? Facebook, same thing. Is Facebook really the, the, the means uh, to collaborate better at work? I'm doubtful. Uh, it's possible, again, depending on the industry, depending on the field of work. Um, so I, I insist on the spectrum of a ban rather than being full on and banning everything and being more specific as what we define as social media and emphasizing that we need a ban to some measure for our own good, for security purposes, for our own focus. And that's it. That's why I'm in favor of banning social media in general on, uh, in the workplace. Dirk. Thank you very much, Sebastian. You actually agree with me without telling so. So by now we are at a spectrum and you single out certain channels that may or may not be as useful and uh, you stay away from the studies. Basically, I didn't look at studies specifically for social media. Well, I did look at those too, but uh, what I meant, what I referred to was overall productivity. And that has gone up despite of social media at the workplace. So yes, I personally feel distracted too. But in reality, we are getting more and more and more productive. And if it's not damaging our productivity, then why banning it? And you said so yourself, you would continue to allow certain, certain uh, channels. You see some benefits. So why banning it? <laughs> Just don't do it. It's impractical. It costs too much. And it's not really helping anything. And instead, it's, a ban is always worse than having, let's say, cultural habits in place. Maybe that's the way to go. That it's just impolite to stare at your Facebook stream while being in a meeting. And by the way, let's ban meetings. They are productivity killers too. Thanks for the debate. And this the usual goes. We'd love to have your review on iTunes. We want to have excellent reviews. Go to our iTunes page. 
uh, give us some stars and also uh, vote vote on what you thought uh, on who you thought convinced you the most go to our webpage to debate.net you can add comments over there or on Facebook social media you can do this on the workplace or not it's up to you as long as your company does not <laughs> ban it uh, you can do whatever you want uh, but we do encourage you to use Facebook or Twitter or our webpage or Google Plus or whatever you prefer to let us know what you thought of this debate and in general if you have any feedback about this podcast so thank you very much thank you Dirk thank you it was a lot of fun thank you bye 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 So the next debate should be should motion should, should meetings be banned in the <laughs> oh yeah meetings should definitely be banned <laughs> at least Actually, some I, meetings I, when i prepared this uh this debate uh, i prepared it already uh, a few weeks ago and uh i i cannot understand what i was writing at the very end of my notes and it's exactly what you said at the end in terms of educating people training and I, and I put training and I, and I was like, why did I put this? And I, it just reminded me that's exactly, exactly the point of getting people to know, you know how to indeed maybe efficiently use distractions as a way to pause and have a break and also be polite in meetings or whatever they're doing. I, I genuinely think that it's not uh, integrated in people's minds, at least around me. I don't, I think we're, and I see it with myself, I, I know that I can be very distracted. Yeah. Not all the time, but it does happen. And sometimes my, my brain feels sore. So it's like, you know, you, you're like, oh, yeah, let's, let's look up a news and uh, Facebook and whatever. And it's not, you, you're doing that because you want to distract yourself and get some freedom of thought or escapism, basically. You, you like to be distracted from whatever you are bored of right now or, or frustrated with. But it's, it's not making you feel better in the end. You even feel more exhausted. So I'm, I'm totally following you on that. Um, also, I, I see myself, I'm, I'm a podcast uh, addict. So I'm, I'm listening to podcasts all the time. And I'm always tempted to flip through my social media while I'm doing that. And this really becomes after a while painful because you feel like, I have a really hard time following the podcast and flipping through it, yet I, I'm always tempted to do that. So I'm, I'm with you on that. We need to, to find good practices. That's, that's maybe that point. I have not forgotten the time when I was working in a company, which I will not name. They may have changed their practices. I was a consultant and I was on the customer's premises and they were banning, I think, all internet access on the web. That was in 2003. 2003. Knowing was which company all, all it is, it was a was, successful company, right? <laughs> yeah, only access to the internet. And I remember there was a new sticker on the bottom of the internet. So I would, I would read this, refresh the page constantly to read the little tiny news snippets, the news snippets, you know? And I would use um, either my the corporate email to do some personal email when I was done with my work and I had like nothing to do and I could just like not distract myself and do nothing. I just started using my my corporate email to just send personal emails. And uh, in, in the French labor law, I don't know if it has changed since, but if you have a specific folder called personal, in theory the employer cannot have access to it unless they ask you and they request the access to that uh, folder. Uh, but I, I know I suffered from this by by being underemployed back then, maybe a little bit, and just wasting my time. So, like, what do you do in that case? Um, I I remember uh, my wife had a had a, a well. I'm not naming that employer either. Um, they they were a similar thing. They they blocked all personal access, and as a result, um, she brought her her netbook with her with uh, her own internet access mm -hmm. and so um, I at some point yes it may be protective for the network and security and all that but you're not stopping people from being connected and I think in this day and age we shouldn't stop people from being connected because it's part of who we are and what we're doing um, but there need to be practices in place uh, rules of what is considered impolite 
um, as, as we mentioned earlier, in the meeting, um, having, having side conversation, ignoring the, the person presenting is impolite. So is checking your, your uh, phone all the time. And I think that should be something that is enforced culturally, not, uh, not by imposing rules, because rules are circumvented. Okay.